The next item of business is a statement by Angela Constance on medication-assisted treatment and workforce update. The Minister will take questions at the end of her statement, and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I call on Angela Constance. Up to 10 minutes, Minister. President officer, every life lost to drugs is as tragic and unacceptable, and I want to convey my condolences to those who have lost a loved one and reaffirm my commitment to saving and improving lives. Today, I will provide Parliament with an update on progress in implementing MAT standards and in tackling the related workforce challenges. But first, I would like to say a few words about the quarterly figures based on the data from Police Scotland, which were published today. Police Scotland has reported that during the first nine months of 2022, there were 797 suspected drug deaths, 21% fewer than the same period for 2021. While this can't be used to make accurate predictions about the status of the annual report for 2022, which will be about confirmed cases, it does enable services to identify where help may be needed and keeps Parliament abreast of developments. In June, when I provided my last update to Parliament on MAT standards, the Public Health Scotland benchmarking report was published. That report confirmed that while most areas had at least partially implemented MAT standards 1 to 5, performance fell short of the challenge I had set to embed MAT standards by April of this year. Whilst the report demonstrated that progress was being made on the ground, the pace and scale of change was neither good enough nor quick enough, especially around MAT Standard 1, same-day treatment. That is why I took the unprecedented step of issuing a letter of direction to delivery partners, asking them to personally sign a timed and detailed implementation plan for all 10 standards. I can confirm that all areas have submitted their plans, we are now finalising the details and ensuring that they have been published on websites. Areas are already reporting regularly to the Scottish Government on progress, either monthly or quarterly. I am continuing to meet with Chief Officers and MAT leads from each area to discuss their plans and learn more about how they are meeting their local challenges. There are some areas who have achieved good things already, such as in the borders. The MAT implementation support team led by Public Health Scotland have also reported good progress being made on implementing same-day treatment across other parts of the country, with special mentions for the work being done in Inverclyde, Eastern Barnshire, Murray and Western Barnshire. The MIST team has noted increased involvement from senior leadership in many areas, as well as improvements in pathways for people accessing treatment and better inter-organisational sharing of best practice. MIST also notes that REACH rights-based advocacy training has now been delivered across multiple ADP areas with further training planned. However, there are areas with challenges still to overcome, and the MIST team is supporting them to address recruitment, local communication issues and unnecessary structural barriers. This includes a persistence in some areas to not involve third sector partners closely enough. These are the focus of teams locally to ensure the changes and improvements necessary are being actioned at pace. We know that many people with substance use problem also have a mental health concern. To address one, we often must also address the other. That is why I, along with the Minister for well Mental Wellbeing and Social Care, commissioned a rapid review into the care for people with co-occurring mental health and substance use concerns. The findings from this review, which were published on the 30th of November, will help inform our work to better integrate mental health and substance use services and deliver MAT Standard 9. The review includes recommendations on how to better integrate services, but it also reaffirms the challenges that exist. A survey of practitioners found that over a third of the respondents worked in substance use services which do not offer mental health support. This is troubling as a lack of integration between mental health and substance use services is a key barrier to accessing adequate treatment and support. We are considering the recommendations now and will engage with stakeholders and local partners. I will update Parliament in the early part of next year on how we will accelerate the integration of services. 
In relation to workforce, we know the challenges all across health and social care. This is one of the reasons we need a longer term workforce development plan for the delivery of MAT standards and for our wider national mission. And today I would like to set out how we plan to expand and upskill the workforce. I have seen firsthand and heard directly from those delivering life-saving work in this often challenging environment. And I know that there have been issues around recruitment, retention and service design. These points were echoed through the research published by the Scottish Government in March. In June, I outlined to Parliament that the majority of the additional £10 million per year MAP funding would be focused on recruiting more than 100 additional staff. And I am encouraged to learn that, whilst not without challenge, many local areas are reporting that they have made significant progress towards the targets that they have set for themselves. In order to support and strengthen the workforce, the Scottish Government has brought together an expert group with frontline and real-life experience to develop a longer-term workforce plan, as recommended by the Drugs Desk Task Force. This plan, which we will publish in the summer of next year, will set out the medium and longer-term steps required to overcome key workforce challenges. The group have been able to successfully agree a number of short-term outcomes and have already begun to drive these forward. An example of this is the development of a single platform for access to training and key workforce resources. This will be launched by the summer of next year and will support the upskilling and retention of staff through improved access to continuous professional development. People with lived and living experience need better support to pursue careers within the sector. This expert group is developing guidance which will put in place the right support to help peers play a more active role in the design and delivery of services. Cross-government work will also be progressed to provide employment support to people who use drugs through the No One Left Behind strategy. It is anticipated that these measures will, to some extent, contribute to improved staff wellbeing, a key priority. However, the Scottish Government has also made £12 million available to support this and introduced a national wellbeing hub. We know that workforce planning needs to be grounded on a firm grasp of the diverse landscape of services, providers, locations and professionals working in this sector. In order to establish that service mapping work is underway alongside much needed work to improve workforce data capture. There has been much discussion around the timescale for full implementation of MAT standards. Indeed, the ambitious target I set to have the standards embedded by this year was clearly a really stretching target for services. With drug deaths at a record high, immediate change had to be driven hard and momentum put into the system. I want all 10 standards to be implemented in a sustainable way that will make a long-term difference for all of those in treatment. We have not chosen an easy path in judging whether the standards are in place or not. We have set the bar rightly high by insisting that only when areas have positive experiential evidence from people using the services on the ground will they be able to claim that better services are in place. This is the measure that ultimately matters the most. The work being done to support local areas implement the standards fully has thrown some of the challenges we need to overcome into sharp focus. In light of the scale of some of those, particularly in justice settings, I am accepting the timescales for full implementation in community and justice settings as recommended by Public Health Scotland in its benchmarking report of June 2022. The phased approach recommended by Public Health Scotland between now and April 25, with clearly identified milestones, means that we can continue to progress with the breadth and depth of the programme to ensure that the MAT standards work for people delivering them, but most of all that they work for those who need them. Public Health Scotland will continue to provide support to deliver against this timescale and will continue to publish progress reports. And I will continue to update Parliament next year in June and December. In time for my next update in June, Public Health Scotland will once again publish a full RAG report to track progress. But we need more than just these 10 standards. I want to see an expansion of standards for other kinds of drug treatment as well. I want to expand the scope of the standards so that they include leadership, women and children and the whole family approach and treatment options for benzodiazepines. 
This extension links to actions called for by the Task Force on the National Specification for Treatment and Recovery Services, and the Government will be responding to the recommendations of the Task Force in the coming weeks. Presiding officer, the work on MAT is interlinked to the whole of the national mission and the actions being taken forward as part of the cross-government plan. This work is saving lives, it is tackling stigma, it is giving those who thought they had no voice a voice, it is giving a stigmatised population and workforce a platform to change and save lives. Thank you. Thank you. The Minister will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we'll move on to the next item of business. I'd be grateful if members who wish to ask a question were to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call Sandesh Gulhani. Thank you. I would like to start by commending the Minister on her candour. In 2021, there were 1,330 drug-related deaths in Scotland. This is not just a number. It is 1,330 families suffering in anguish due to failure of SNP drugs policy. Scotland's drug death rate is 3.7 times that of the UK as a whole, and it's also higher than that of any European country. This is not just a stat. These are our communities. These are Scottish communities up and down the country who are suffering through a drugs epidemic. There is a lot of high-level policy and management discussion in this statement. What we have to see is actual delivery and improvements on the ground. And I hope that the Minister would be able to provide this at her next update. Now that plans are finally in place, is the Minister confident that MAT standards 1 to 5 will be met by 2023? And what action will the Minister take if milestones are not achieved? Minister. Presiding officer, I'm sure Mr Glohani will agree that MAT standards define absolutely what is needed for safe, accessible and consistent treatment, uh, the length and breadth of Scotland. Uh, they are not optional and they are most certainly not a tick box exercise. I have and will continue to be clear and direct with Parliament and our partners about progress and pace. And I have also taken unprecedented action which are providing unprecedented scrutiny and also unprecedented support. And that is about maintaining momentum to ensure that we can deliver on the ground. And I am accepting Public Health Scotland's findings and recommendations, which are based on a robust evidence-based plan that they have published. They do indeed they remain challenging, they are ambitious, but I believe they're achievable. And the Public Health Scotland report has set out a clear milestones. I am determined that we will every day, each and every day, uh, put a shoulder to the field to ensure that the progress that has been made, that we will indeed build upon, upon that. And my final point, presiding officer, is that uh, the importance of Public Health Scotland's work in this area and that they will once again, uh, come June, shine a light on what has been achieved and what is not. And I can assure Mr Gohani and Chamber that depending on those findings, they will very much inform uh, future action, uh, both in terms of support and scrutiny. Claire Baker. Um, thank you, President Officer, and thank you to the Minister for advance light of the statement. So, according to today's Police Scotland publication, there have been nearly 800 suspected drug deaths in January through to September. And on the current trajectory, it is likely by the end of this year, since a public health emergency was declared by the Scottish Government, deaths will be in excess of 3,500. And while the focus is on reducing fatalities, um, can I ask if the government is developing an understanding of which policy approach is having the most impact to inform future practice? Uh, the minister says she accepts Public Health Scotland's recommendations that standards 1 to 5 should be implemented by April 2023. But I have to ask again, is she confident, based on the reports that she is receiving, that we don't have access to at this point in time, that the target will be met by 2023? And while the target for 6 to 10 is more than two years away, at the pace of progress so far, we need to see work in these areas right now. Is the funding in place to support implementation of 6 to 10? And finally, of the 100 additional staff she referred to, how many have been recruited? Minister. President officer, I very much appreciate um, Ms Baker's unswerving and unequivocal support for the implementation of the medication-assisted uh, treatment standards. Uh, she has 
right to point out that one death is one too many. And while the suspected drug deaths that have been reported on this morning, uh, while they show uh, in terms of the uh, most up-to-date quarter published that the lowest recorded number of suspected drug deaths in a single uh, calendar quarter since January to March 2007. Uh, and it is, of course, I always uh, add all the caveats to the suspected uh, drug death statistics because that is not the same um, as the actual confirmed deaths. Um, in terms of our uh, national mission plan, there is a, an outcomes framework um, and we have done uh, in-depth work to be very clear in response to the, the outcomes uh, and to be able to track and monitor where we are having more success uh, and where challenges remain. I repeat what I said to Mr Gohani, uh, the uh, timelines for this work are indeed uh, challenging. There are various challenges that we're all familiar with across the health and social care sector, but I do believe that they are achievable. And as I always do, I will give my parliament, this parliament, an undertaking that where uh, problems exist um, or where by shining a light we uncover uh, more issues, they will have my full uh, and undivided attention. And the point that she makes about standards 6010 is that those standards are um, of importance because while standards 1 to 5 are about the, the, the standard of care that individuals receive, uh, standards 6 to 10 are about the systemic changes uh, that we must make uh, and the identification of senior leads in every area with this regard is of particular importance. She is quite correct to point that there is uh, £10 million uh, based on locally agreed plans um, and while the uh, recruitment um, challenges remain. I am encouraged that some areas um, have done well against uh, their own targets for that area and I'm happy to discuss that uh, further uh, with her. And it's also important uh, to note that we are beginning to see uh, a much better shift in MAT Standard 1 same-day treatment um, away uh, from red uh, to amber and in some cases green. But I will of course keep the member updated. Julian Martin to be followed by Sue Webber. Thank you, President Officer. The Minister mentioned a whole family approach in her statement and the Mark work MAT work principles state that families affected by substance use need to be reached at both local and national levels. Can I ask the Minister what support is currently being provided to establish advocacy services in local areas and empower families to have a voice in ensuring that systems and services are non-discriminatory and actively put their lived experience at the heart? Minister. Presiding officer, families are partners in the recovery of their loved ones. Families are also partners uh, for the change that we need to see uh, in terms of how services are provided across the country. Uh, MAT Standard 8 is clear that people using services should have access to independent advocacy, uh, whether that's for their treatment, housing, welfare and income. Uh, people should also be fully informed uh, about those advocacy services that are available uh, locally. We, as I've indicated in my statement, will continue to work very closely uh, with the MAT implementation support team. Uh, the government has made substantial uh, funding commitments around the whole family approach um, and the family inclusive practice uh, and we are auditing uh, the outcomes of that both in terms of CORA funds and alcohol and drug partnerships. It is also imperative that families receive support uh, in their own right. I would also, President Officer, just quickly pay tribute to REACH Advocacy who are funded via the CORA Foundation to embed a human rights based approach to service delivery and the REACH Advocacy Project provides SQA accredited training to practitioners, families and people who use drugs. Sue Webber to be followed by Joe Fitzpatrick. Yeah, thank you, President Officer, and I can firstly apologise for my late arrival in the Chamber. The Minister has stated that this work is rightly about saving lives, it's about tackling stigma, it is about giving those who thought they had no voice a voice. And Angela Constance stated that we need more than just these 10 standards. I want to see an expansion of standards for other kinds of drug treatment as well. So Minister, would you listen to the faces and voices of recovery, favour, who have called on the Scottish Government to introduce our Right to Recovery Bill to ensure that MAT standards are properly implemented? Minister. 
Presiding officer, I will give a fair and listening ear to, to all stakeholders um, and all MSPs across this chamber. In terms of the Right to Recovery Bill, um, I will look at that with great interest uh, once it is published. Uh, she will understand that, meantime, the Government has to pursue its own legislative programme, uh, which, for example, is in and around the National Care Service and uh, providing that single framework of accountability. We will also be consulting on the Human Rights Bill uh, next year. And this I am sure we can all agree is about achieving the highest attainable standard of physical and mental health and of course the work that the National Collaborative, you know, the voice, galvanising the voice of lived and living experience and families uh, to bring forward a Charter of Rights which will very much inform that Human Rights Bill is, is Im important. Joe Fitzpatrick to be followed by Paul Sweeney. Thank you, President Officer, and thank the Minister for her update. Um, the Minister knows how important I, I think the implementation of the MAT standards is. But I wonder if the, the Minister can provide us with an update um, on progress towards establishing diamorphine assisted treatment in Dundee for those most vulnerable members of the community. Minister. Sign officer, Scottish Government officials have met with the Dundee Alcohol and Drugs Partnership on a number of occasions to discuss the potential of establishing diamorphine assisted treatment, otherwise known as DAT or HAT. Uh, the last meeting was at the end of November. Uh, discussions focused on work which Dundee are considering to undertake a fully costed scoping study to establish the need for such a facility. Uh, this has been done in partnership, particularly with the third uh, sector, um, and the Scottish Government has confirmed that there would be funding available to support this scoping work. Uh, Cranston, uh, a, a charity that many of us in this chamber will be familiar with, have also made clear their desire to establish a DAT facility in Dundee uh, and have been in talks with partners. Uh, Dundee ADP, I understand, have considered a proposal for Cranston uh, at their meeting on the 6th of December, where they also agreed to move forward with the scoping study and the independent chair of the ADP has written to Cranston to keep them appraised. And Scottish Government officials are due to meet again with colleagues from Cranston on the 19th of December. Paul Sweeney, to be followed by Audrey Nicholl. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Minister advised Parliament in June that the remainder of the £10 million a year MAP funding had been earmarked for the recruitment of over 100 additional staff, and she has highlighted that progress has been made in some areas. However, given that Glasgow has the highest proportion of drug deaths in Scotland and that not a single MAT standard has been fully implemented in the city by the target date that the Minister herself set, can she update the Parliament on how many additional staff have been recruited in Glasgow and how much of that £10 million has been allocated to Glasgow in particular? Minister. Presiding officer, the um, funding that comes through uh, the, the MAT standards work was based on locally agreed action plans. Uh, I can, of course, provide Mr Sweeney with um, further information on some of the specifics in and around Glasgow. There is significant amounts of CORA funding has also went to Glasgow, uh, and in terms of funding via NHS uh, and integrated authorities, uh, there is um, a substantial investment in Glasgow that, from memory, I think amounts to £12 uh, million. Pounds but I will provide Mr Sweeney with uh, some of the specifics uh, that he is looking for. Audrey Nicholl to be followed by Alex Cole-Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The MAT standards emphasise a multi-pronged approach to treatment and residential rehabilitation as one potential course for support. So in the work to ensure that the MAT standards are met, could the Minister provide an update on efforts to increase the number of people being publicly funded for their residential rehabilitation programmes? Minister. Presiding officer, it is really important that the work uh, to implement MAT standards is also fully connected with pathways uh, into residential rehabilitation and some of the work we are doing with our agencies is about making sure that we have that uh, wider uh, connectivity. Um, I think Chamber is well aware of the Scottish Government's um, commitment uh, to ensure a minimum of 1,000 places are funded publicly uh, by the end of this parliamentary term. We are also providing alcohol and drug partnerships uh, with uh, £5 million pounds per year uh, to facilitate 
uh, additional uh, placements into residential rehabilitation and uh, detox. Placements are also supported via the prison to rehab pathway. And Public Health Scotland, again, are providing uh, quarterly reports. And we are seeing a steady increase over the last quarters with an increasing number of placements uh, being made via ADPs. And the last published quarter uh, reported 170 referrals. Uh, that's the highest on record. And the national mission to date has supported over 700 uh, referrals into residential rehabilitation. Alex Cole Hamilton to be followed by Stuart McMillan. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Can I take the Minister back to our last exchange on this topic in the Chamber, which is around issues surrounding rurality. Um, despite the progress that has been made around Matt Sanders, and that is welcome, there is still proving very difficult to access those same-day services in rural areas, with clinics being few and far between. And a huge issue around accessing those services is uh, transport and, and the difficulties many have in accessing them um, because they are that distance away. So can I ask the Minister what the Government's plan are to increase the provision of same-day services in rural areas and what the government would consider doing in exploring ways to provide such transport accesses as needed to ensure that those who need urgent same-day care can access it um, a clinic that is far away from them. Minister. Presiding officer, Mr Cole Hamilton is quite correct to make the links with uh, transport. Uh, when I next come back to Parliament uh, to present the cross-government action plan as recommended by the task force, uh, I can assure him issues of transport uh, will feature in that. He is also quite correct to point to some of the challenges in, in our more rural communities. Um, particularly our island communities. There are some authorities, uh, Gail and Butte, for example, that has 22 um, islands. Um, but what we are seeing through the MAT standard implementation support team is we are seeing some real creativity and commitment in our rural areas to do things differently. I think partnership with the third sector in this area um, is absolutely vital. And I know I gave a commitment to Mr Cole Hamilton when I was last um, at committee to provide some case studies uh, on that very point to exemplify the good work that has been done. Stuart McMillan to be followed by Gillian Mackay. Right, thank you, President. I'd also like to remind the Chamber and the Vice Chair of moving on Inverclyde Local Addiction Service. Right, what considerations have been given to assisting the third sector with regards to prescribing? Minister. President officer, the Scottish Government fully supports the need for prescribing services to work closely with third sector partners who often have prescribers for the services uh, that they uh, provide. The work being undertaken by the MIST team will allow local areas to deliver greater access and choice of treatment through identifying uh, local third sector prescribing options. The MAT implementation support team have also restarted a non-medical prescribing forum for non-medical prescribers delivering MAT, and this, I'm pleased to say, includes uh, the third sector. And as an example of what can be done, Turning Point Scotland, uh, who have nursing staff employed in their Glasgow service, um, and it's important to remember that under MAT Standard 5, uh, that there is scope to encourage local areas to involve uh, third sector to pr 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 provide more joined up prescribing bearing in mind that MAT5 is in and around the retention of people in training which, uh, treatment, which is crucial uh, to achieving our overall uh, treatment targets. Julian Mackay to be followed by Jackie Dunbar. I thank the Minister for advance sight of her statement. In her statement, the Minister, the minister refers to the upskilling of the workforce. We know stigma plays a large part in why some may not present services in the first place or why some may not continue in treatment. We're obviously also aware of the stigma attached to those who work in the sector. As part of this upskilling, what's being done to embed practice that does not further embed stigma and assists with culture change? Minister. Presiding officer, I've already intimated in my, my statement the shorter term actions that are currently being pursued. But in terms of that uh, longer term action plan uh, that we will bring forward next year, uh, we will outline core skills, knowledge, values and mandatory training uh, that, is, that, that will be required. 
It is true that many staff do not feel valued in the same way as other health and social care staff or other staff who are working in emergency settings. And it is crucial that we improve public awareness of this vital work, and that is one way of challenging stigma and increasing attractiveness uh, into the vital work in this sector. Uh, there are some great programmes um, out there. Uh, we want to, of course, develop better educational pathways, um, and the Scottish Drugs Forum Addiction Workers Training Programme, I think, is a really good um, example of what can be done to bring people with lived and living experience uh, into the sector. And since 2005, uh, they have had more than 300 people enrol uh, in that excellent training programme. Jackie Dunbar, to be followed by Craig Hoy. Thank you, President Officer. It kind of follows on from Gillian Mackay's question. Um, so can I ask the Minister to outline the resources being provided to recruit, train and retain staff within the ADP workforce? Minister. It is important to remember that alcohol and drug partnerships bring together uh, local delivery partners who are responsible for commissioning and the uh, development of services. I have already spoke about the uh, £10 million per annum that is uh, dedicated to support the implementation of MAT standards. But it is also worth remembering that in this financial year, 2022-23, that £106 million has been made available to alcohol and drug partnerships to support uh, local and uh, national initiatives and that a skilled and resilient workforce is a cross-cutting priority which underpins all our work in the national mission and addressing recruitment, retention and training challenges is absolutely key to our workforce development. And Craig Hoy. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. The Government's failure to fully embed MAT standards is a cause of growing concern and comes alongside uh, cuts to primary care, frontline policing, uh, council budgets and uh, justice. The Minister says that there is a clear link between drugs policy and mental health policy, yet the Scottish Government has just uh, slashed the mental health budget by £38 million. Does the Minister share my concern that when it comes to ending the harm done by drugs, avoidable uh, uh, SNP budget cuts are sadly setting Scotland on a path to failure. Minister. Uh, President officer, let me make clear that the work that we are doing and that we are engaged in in terms of rolling out MAT is key to removing the barriers uh, that persist in and around people accessing uh, mental health. Uh, there is, of course, work um, underway, um, both joint work between myself and Mr Stewart in and around pathways. There is £2 million current um, investment to expand that uh, pathways work into five um, health boards, the Mental Welfare Commission report, as well as the rapid review uh, that I commissioned, all point uh, to the same solutions, uh, the, the pragmatic solutions. And I suppose in terms of uh, resource, um, I would point to the fact that um, in terms of the mental health investment, I think for the last financial year, uh, that was uh, around a billion pounds. And the key challenge um, for me and other colleagues in government is to ensure that people who use drugs or who are in recovery, that they get their access to those resources that do exist. Thank you. That concludes the ministerial statement on medication-assisted treatment and workforce update. I'll allow a moment or two for front benches to get themselves organised.